de Vista en welkom bij weer een nieuwe video. Ja, vandaag gaan we echt iets heel erg tof doen. Iets wat we nog nooit eerder gedaan hebben in de hele historie van El de Vista. We gaan vandaag namelijk een interview doen. Ja, echt heel erg gaaf. Uh, de eerste keer dat ik eigenlijk benaderd ben door iemand, uh, dat is niet helemaal waar. Ik ben al eerder benaderd door iemand die als een keer heeft gezegd van, hey, zou ik een interview met mij, met mij willen doen? Dat gaan we ook zeker doen. Maar uh, de eerste keer dus ook uh, dat echt een bedrijf mij benaderd heeft. Het is namelijk Christian Brown. Ja, Christian Brown, ik, uh, ik hoor je denken, ja, wie is dat dan? Christian Brown is de oprichter van Hobby Database. Ja, Hobby Database, oftewel beter bekend voor jullie, op Price Guide. Ja, en die had gevraagd van, nou goed, hè, ik ben benaderd door iemand en die heeft mij getipt uh, op HobbyDB van, hey, uh, Alt Vista, kijk er eens op, een Nederlandse vlogger op YouTube van Funke Pops. En uh, wellicht kun je wat meer informatie geven over Pop Price Guide. Uh, hartstikke tof natuurlijk. Dus ik heb op Facebook heb ik wat vragen uitgesteld, hè, heb ik in, uh, uitge uitgezet en ik heb gevraagd van, nou, hebben jullie vragen voor PPG? Uh, laat het maar weten, want dan ga ik het allemaal uh, Christian Brown voorleggen en hopelijk krijgen we er een antwoord op. Heel erg tof. Nou, ik heb aardige vragen binnengekregen, totaal 10 heel toffe vragen die ik allemaal heb kunnen voorleggen uh, en dan kan het natuurlijk zo zijn dat ik na het interview dat jullie misschien nog steeds meer, uh, meer uh, vragen hebt uh, voor Christian Brown. Nou geen probleem. Hoe kun je ervoor zorgen dat hij die ook beantwoordt? Nou heel simpel. Ik heb Christian Brown laten weten als deze video online komt. Stak ik hem hem een link stuur en dat hij gewoon de gedurende tijd de video heel erg goed in de gaten houdt. Tenminste de comments en op elke comment gaat hij dus reageren. Goed tof is dat. Dus ja, als je nog een vraag hebt aan Christian Brown van Pop Price Guide, Hobby Database, laat een comment onder, uh, een comment onder, uh, onder de video. Uh, het liefst denk ik het Engels, dat is misschien de handigste, want het duurt, uh, het duurt het wat langer uh, voordat hij natuurlijk antwoord geeft, want het is natuurlijk een Amerikaan. Dus komt dat Orlando volgens mij, dus uh, hoe vet is dat? Ja, hoe is dit interview geworden? Uh, ja, uh, Alvast excuses voor mijn hele slechte Engels. Ja, ik, ben, ik moet dat nog even een beetje opschroeven. Dus uh, uh, wellicht in de toekomst dat het wat beter gaat. De eerste keer dat ik dat ook zoiets heb gedaan. Ik vond ook dat mijn audio had ook wat beter kunnen, uh, kunnen, gaat ook wel beter worden. Dus ook daarvoor alvast uh, excuses. Maar goed, best wel leuk geworden. En uh, ik heb overal een antwoord op gekregen. Ik vond het heel erg leerzaam. Dus ik hoop jullie ook. Dus uh, laten we gaan kijken. We gaan beginnen. Excellent. Maar, I'm, I'm ready when you are. Yes, I'm ready. Um, I have uh, collected some questions. Um, uh, my 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 followers uh, on uh, on YouTube and on uh, uh, other uh, social media like Facebook. I uh, asked them, uh, "Have you some uh, uh, questions for uh, <clears throat> Popwise guides?" And, and they come with, uh, with yeah with a lot of uh, questions. So uh, yeah, Good. so so cool. Right. Uh, Okay, now let's start. I, I, I will share, say, uh, sorry for my bad English. <laughs> this is the first time I'm. Uh... Don't worry, it's good. Just oh. so you know, I will share my screen. Okay. Yeah. As, that works, right? Yes, yes, it's okay. Good. Okay. Okay, the first question um, How come there are Funker Pops with a very high value while the Pops are still widely available? It's an excellent question. Um, and what I would like to do, Kern, first is give you a quick overview and answer some of the questions that I get all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's more detailed in there. So um, let me share my screen with you. Okay. Oh, you disabled screen sharing. <laughs> oh, so. Let's see how, how, have to, how, how I have to do that. This is a, uh, 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 share screen? Allow pet yes. Yeah. Okay, now it should work. Okay, let's try again. Yes, now I can see it. So first, yeah. uh, I would want to just explain some basics. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the site that you use most of the time, Pop Price Guide, is basically uh, a dedicated version of HobbyDB. As you can see here, you've got the HobbyDB logo, you got the PPG logo, got a message here, I can click that away. Um, they're the same. Um, so what happens here is um, PPG is everything made by Funko about 36,000 items. Okay. Anything else you can find on HobbyDB. So if you like action figures or final art or Kid Robot, if you like Funko made customs, you know, customs people made on the back of a Funko, then you will find them on HobbyDB, but not on PPG. So that's just, uh, and it's the same username. You can use both sites. You can go back and forth. In fact, 
you can add something in uh, to your collection on HobbyDB and then go back in PPG and you will see it in your collection you showcase. So, so that's the uh, starting point. Uh, the other one is uh, our price guide segment is only as good as the pricing that we have. Pricing is done by two and a half thousand volunteers now. We call them the squat. And uh, you know they, they add these price points here. Um, and we have expanded the type of price points we take by quite a lot. Now, I always get questions on that, so I thought I'd start with that. Um, <laughs> you know, this is the HobbyDB knowledge base, which as acts for PPG and HobbyDB and some other sites. Um, and you can see here, this is the type of price points. Price point is when something gets sold that we that we can check. That's really what we care about. So it's not, you know, uh, Tom selling something to Misha uh, in a dark alley. We we wouldn't record that. It got to be, there has to be some proof point, um, like a URL or something else. So uh, starting point for us is the retail price. That's how much you pay when you go to your local supermarket or your toy shop or game shop or you buy it online. Uh, that should be the starting point for any item. Uh, then uh, we have something called the user estimated value. That's only for very rare items, prototypes and things like that. So I'll disregard that for a second. We've got price guides, not so necessarily important for Funko. You know, there can be books or online. And then we have auction house prices. We've got now about 35 auction houses we can take. And okay. Pristine is an interesting one, for example, because Pristine is a specialist in uh, autographed Funko Pops. So we get a lot of price from them. Uh, from them. Obviously, then there's eBay. Uh, there's eBay best offer, which we can now do again for a while we couldn't. Um, they are our own market prices. So that's the HobbyDB and the PPG market price uh, place. There's Macari. There's a company called StockX that sells Funko Pops. There's Yahoo Japan, uh, which is the eBay equivalent in Japan. And then we just started taking on board what we call trusted online retailers, where we know the retailer and they sell not just new pops, but also old pops. First one here is seven bucks a pop sell a few hundred pops every week. They buy collection and then sell them. So they're interesting price points for us as well. And we'll expand on that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, very recently we added eBay fight sales. Uh, sounds a little complex, but what that is, um, you may have seen there was recently a transaction in uh, Los Angeles where uh, one of our monster, uh, sorry, one of our members who's called Grail Monster uh, bought an item, a Funko Pop, the golden ticket two pack. Willy Wonka, yes. <laughs> for $100,000. And he made a video of it. And we have some other transactions like that where, you know, the buyer uh, tells us, hey, I bought this item. Uh, these are for high value items. These are for, you know, things like Clockwork Orange, where there are only 12 are made. Um, because we have not, uh, we had no price points. And now, uh, we're getting these price points reported to us, and there's a small team of volunteers that have been with us for a long time, and they check it, and then they vote, saying, yes, we buy this. We think this is a good price point for us to add, or no, we, we don't have enough evidence. We don't take this. So that's fairly new, and it's really important. I mean, if you take the golden ticket one, none of them were ever sold on a public marketplace that we know of. No. Now we got two price points. So now we have a million times more information than we had before because we're doing this. So this is relevant for anything that has, you know, that's 2017 and earlier or has a 500 edition run where, where transactions are rare. If we have five transactions on eBay and Macari in our marketplace, we don't need it. But if we don't, then this comes in. So uh, between these, there's about 43 different venues that we now take price points for. I know you had questions. Go for them. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of questions. Uh, first of all, I, I never know this. I, do, I, I only uh, know uh, the uh, the pop price guys is, is guided by uh, eBay and uh, Mikari. Um, so this is totally new for me. <clears throat> uh, but this is um seeing from uh the, the united states because 
in 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 Europe, we have uh, a lot of other uh, uh, how how can uh, do I say that um, like vintage. Uh, uh, vintage is very uh, big uh, uh, to sell uh, uh, Funko Pops uh, over and over, uh, 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 particularly. So, is that Mark Platz or who do you say? S sorry, uh, yeah, Mark Platz also, but vintage. V i n t a d. It's it's it's. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, what you can do is you can see there's a button here called Contact Hobby DB. Mm -hmm. Just briefly. You know, the team, we, we are about six people here. We all collect, and not everybody collects Funko. I collect, uh, I collect, you know, I collect science fiction toys, but we all collect us. Uh, you can always reach out to us and say, hey, we want to do Vinted. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for example, Mercari is a very new recent addition to us, and we're now doing it because Mercari now has a URL that you can check. Ah. Oh. Um, that's, that's always very important to us. We want to know that this item really has sold and not just somebody tells us about it. Uh, so if we can check vintage transactions, we can add them, it's not a problem. In fact, it, it takes almost no time uh, to enable that. And then if they are volunteers that want to add those, they can do that too. Uh, <laughs> you know, when you, when you add a price point, so as a volunteer squad member, you see I have this menu point called price points. Mm -hmm. This is where I can add a user estimated value. That's just, that only counts if there's no other price points. So okay. that's, what, that's what prototypes and stuff. I can add a retail price. I can then add an eBay auction or buy now. I can add an eBay best offer or any other price point. So I go here and let's say Vinted had a URL, then we can add Vinted to it. And you can say, you know, I bought something and, you know, it was in, in euros and it was um and then you can put the dollar number in there the system currently works on dollars but you can put a euro number in and then just um use an xe.com um price for the conversion for that item and then you can put it in so so this form would allow uh, any auction house that has a url that we can check uh that's the important thing it's the you know let me show it to you on an example that no has one. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, that one here. So you can see, for example, this one, I just looked at it uh, for a minute. <laughs> okay. has, this is a British auction house. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is in pounds. And then uh, this one here is also British. This is a British company. This is also a British auction house called Wallace and Wallace. And um, that's a price guide, that's a book. And you can always click on it. So here, if I click on it, you see the book, you can buy that, you can check it. So uh, here, this is an auction ho uh, house in, up in England somewhere. You can go there and you can check that item. You got to log in, but it's free and you can check it. So yeah. that's important to us. As long as that is a case, we can do mark plots, we can do vintage, uh, we can do anything uh, as long as there is proof. Yes, I understand. I understand. Uh, then I have also a question uh, from uh, one of my viewers. They uh, uh, sent me the question. Um, the values on eBay are sometimes influenced by sellers who uh, buy up their own Funkos in order to drive up the value of certain pops. Uh, is that is that? Can you manage that? Or? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that that has been there for a long time. Uh, okay. You know, we, we, we are very open with our communication. So here's, mm -hmm. I call it my bad apple list. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. These eBay sellers, we think are no good. So we don't take their prices. Oh. Um, and we have, we have an ongoing, there's a Facebook discussion group for volunteers where um, we discuss a flags. Everything can be flagged. So when you, when you think a price is not right, you see this little flag icon here, you can click that and you can tell us, hey, I don't think this is a good price. And then we will look at it and we will make a decision if we keep that price or remove it. Uh, we get about 200 of those a day across everything. Um, so, so there's that, there's the bad list, there's that. Uh, and our volunteers add these prices by hand. So we check every price point. We look at it and we say, does this make sense? Does it really happen? Um, is this a good seller? 
Uh, so, you know, is this item near mint or better? Um, that's why it's hard work and that's why we need so many volunteers, but it's the only way of doing it. We, we did try some automatics, you know, we had a bot, the bot was called Marcus. He was a nice mm -hmm. bot, but he just didn't work. It wasn't good enough. You know, it was about 92%. We don't like that. We want 99.9% real accuracy. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we've seen this. In fact, we even had a volunteer that manipulated prices. So okay. they were selling on eBay and then they were reporting it because they were in the team. We kicked them out. We have an internal audit team that looks at our volunteers and saying, do we have a bad apple? Because that's what happens when there's money involved. Um, unfortunately, some people cannot resist. No, no, that's <laughs> the same uh, for fake pops because there are a lot of fake Funko Pops uh, uh, around everywhere on eBay or on Markplatz, for instance, you name it. I, yes. I have bought too many fake pops, uh, unfortunately, but... <laughs> that's the same way <laughs> yes absolutely so uh on that um in fact you know we we now have the ability to add what we call fake photos into the system they will help uh, people to better identify what is a fake let me just show you mm -hmm. um that's really new um so oh yes yes But that, that, that's the so this is this is what we call a fake photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know the fake has a dark brown box instead of black, and that's a good fake photo um, that can be added into the system. And we talk about it in our team. Uh, we have a Facebook group where we communicate. Um, so he says, "Is this fake or not?" And we have a discussion. We have some very experienced members, um, and we're trying to keep them out. And you know. Sometimes something gets added, it can be flagged. If somebody knows it's fake, they can flag it. We look at it, we review it. So there's a whole number of mechanisms, right? There's information, there's discussion, there's checking post the fact and acting on it. Okay, because yeah, they are still getting better and better for the fake ones. It's it's it's, it's they, so they, hard. They do, and and we we have we we also add reviews. Uh, so uh, you know you can now add a review to various Funko Pops. Uh, so, so that helps because that's a 36 a 360 degree uh, mm -hmm. look at a at a genuine one. The the problem is always I think if you are you know I have a friend in Argentina. It's very hard to buy Funko Pops in Argentina, um, and if he gets one and he gets home with it. He doesn't have a comparison. He doesn't have that same thing. There's no other place we can look at. So I always think, you know, showing more information, showing you as much as possible the pop, showing you what's real and what's not real, so you get to see. Because you know, you learn, right? You learn to look at at that um, first page and that frame on the left, and you know, the mm -hmm. print font and and how does the um, you know how does it what uh, Funko looks like and so on and so forth. So um, it takes a while. And, and if we can shortcut that and make sure that our members lose less money by buying fakes, then that, yeah. that will, then we do. Yeah. Yeah, I, I also have a question from somebody, but I, I guess the, 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 the question, uh, the answer we already have. Um, why aren't uh, the correct stickers updated more often in pop price guides? But I guess that it's just um, contact hobby database to... Yeah, sorry, which, 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 which ones are not updated often enough? No, I, I see it also. When I'm uh, searching, uh, I have some kind of Funko Pop uh, with, uh, some, uh, with an exclusive sticker because the, the sticker is, all, is, is everything on the Pop. Um, and I go into search him. Uh, often the, the, the sticker I have on the Funko Pop isn't uh, uh, available on uh, Pop Price Guides. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, you know, we we started um, we started about a year and a half ago to do special stickers. We didn't do that before. You know, special stickers often the overseas sticker, um, and and we've added a lot of them. Uh, now it's just a question of having volunteers. This is done by a volunteer. It's actually super easy. I can show you. Uh, the other thing that we've started uh, started doing, and I think that's interesting too, is. Um, Yeah, um, let me actually um, yes. also show you how I do the search here. This is a new search element that we have that I really like where you can, um, you know, 
find more terms that you want to look for mm -hmm. uh, if you get too many results. And I was looking for a particular, I think there's about 500 different Funko products now for uh, for Boba Fett. I was looking for a specific one. Where is he? Where is he? Come on, come on. Are oh, they here? Yes. So, you know, we've, we've always had variants. So this guy here comes in these three colors. Yes. Uh, what we've done is the sub variants. The sub variant can be a sticker. It can also be a different product uh, packaging type. So for example, these, uh, this is the early Star Wars packaging. Yeah, the blue box. Yes. One language. Well, the thing is one language because there is the three language version and the three language version with the three plus H logo. So if you look at that, that's that's a hundred thirty dollar pop with a single language. This is the oldest version. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, the black one is thirteen, and this one, this is the uh, second generation, is twenty three. So it's a meaningful difference. Same with stickers. Um, but to, to answer your question on stickers. It's just a question of when the first um, first squad member comes across them, and you know, yes. a, a, a large majority of our members are in the US, so we get the US ones earlier. Um, you know, if you if your viewers or could you indeed, if you want to join, um, you know, you can you can just send us a message. Um, it's there's a contact button here on the help pages. Mm -hmm. uh, and you get to the help by clicking the little icon up here, you can help us. And, you know, I mean, just to tell you how easy it is, let's say, let's say that black box one, you have another sub variant, uh, you have a sticker variant. You yes. can just click on the, if you have, if you're a squad member, you can click on this up, add sub variant button that comes up and he's saying, with special sticker. And then, and then you click on the save button and that adds the item to our system. So it's really easy to add. Uh, we just need to know it exists. And you know these exist in the wild, generally in your place, you know, in Europe. So if you want to add them, uh, join us. Totally right. clear, totally clear, yes. Okay, um, and then I have, to, yeah, I, I, I think the, the biggest que a question, uh, I, I, I guess we can uh, manage uh, two or three questions uh, all about the same. Um, what is the difference of Pop Price Guide and the Funko app? Because a lot of us yeah. use the Funko app and the Funko app is based on Pop Price Guide. It's, it's announced on the app. It's not really based on us. Their pricing, oh. their pricing is... Uh, so they they ping us and we have what's called an API. That's a way of how two different computer programs can talk to each other. So we have an API and you may notice when you look at a HobbyDB page or a Pop Price Guy page, they have this thing here called the HobbyDB ID, the HDB ID. So what happens is Funko is getting one of these uh, HDB IDs. For Funko, these sub variants don't exist. So for them, this, no. It's the same as that, it's the same as that or that. Uh, same with stickers. You know, even if it's a San Diego Comic Con sticker, it's the same item for that. So they pick one of these prices. Uh, that's not really on us, that's on them. They, they basically take the HTB ID of one of these and then they import that pricing. So they may have $13 or 23 or 32 or under 30. Okay. So, so, you know, they're obviously a separate organization. They, they do their own stuff. Their catalog is just not based like ours. Their catalog works for them. You know, right. for, for them, this is the same pop. And I, I, I actually, I think it is the same pop, which is packaging is different, right? Or sticker is different. So, you know, we think that's important. Um, I, I remember we had a lot of comeback. We were saying, don't split the price. Every time we split the price, we have less price points. So there's a price to pay. But... But you can tell this is a real difference. This is a hundred thirty dollar mm -hmm. item versus the black one is thirteen. That's a ten times difference. I understand. And since we've started doing that, many more people see that, and uh, and it kind of increased a trend where people say, "Oh, I didn't know there is a single. I want those now because those are the first ones." I d I didn't know that all this also that there are variants in uh, in yeah. boxes. But so this is yeah. totally new for me. So thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's, you know, we, we, we partly follow the trends, but we also create trends uh, by separating them out. Now, some people are saying, I really want that one. I don't care about the old one. Anymore. The new one, I want the old one. Well, that's fine. You know? 
So if you just want the pop, pay $13 and get this guy, right? If you lose collector, that's the one to go for. But if you want that original, very old packaging, and that's probably going up in value more. You know, if you ask me, it's the early pops, it's the rare pops, the small numbers. Those are the ones that will go up in value. Now that's that also questions the the uh, uh, answers the question I have uh, why is the the value between a pop price guide and the Funko app often so different? But yeah, I guess that's it's not really different. It's just that um, you know they pick one price and we may have six, like in this case. So and that's, yeah, that's um, and and they is, they ping our system once every 24 hours. So you know if a price changes in our system. Within the next 24 hours, it would be reflected on the on the Funko app as well. But before that, it may be different. Okay, I never know. Okay, one in the 24 hours. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm uh, poo poo. I'm I'm looking now because I think all the questions are. Uh, how do you make it? Yes. Yeah. I. 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 But uh, the platform mainly used for us by Funko. But what is your vision with other collectibles? But yeah, you 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 showed us. So. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me show you. I mean, I'll, I'll give you a quick tour of the stuff that I like. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, I like Batman. Uh, so if you, type in Batman, if you type in Batman, you can see that. And, yes. and the important thing is we got a lot of tools that are maybe slightly complicated, but really powerful. So you've got this search thing on there. You got the sort here. You can sort by all kinds of stuff, like who owns the most items, least owned, highest rated, reference number, release date, added to the catalog. Estimated value, da da da, uh, and then you got all these filters, and they're really nice to combine. So, so now I've looked for Batman, way too many items. So I can go in here, and you can see here we have we have coin banks, and we have clocks, and chess sets, and you know, mugs, and piss dispensers, and da da da. Um, if I wanted to see the cars, I can do that, and then I can say I really want the old cars. So I can now click by oldest release. So now I've got cars that are related to Batman sorted by the oldest first. And if I like this 66 TV Batmobile, which I do, uh, and click on it, it tells me who made it and who designed it and who drove it and who acted that driver and who owns it and which movie it was in, da, da, da. But I also get to see related collectibles. So if I click on this gift set here, for example, it tells me what's in the set. If I click on the car, I can see that there's three variants. Variance is yeah. very yeah. much to the Funko question earlier. Variance is what the manufacturer thought was different. Uh, so blue and green, that's different. Everybody says that. But sub variance is where it gets interesting. That's where we collectors come in, right? So for example, this one has a blue canopy, a clear canopy, and a purple canopy. So who knows why? But collectors find that interesting, you know, and 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 it goes down. It goes down to the spare parts. You can see all the things that make up that thing. And then and then what you can do, you can click on a subject. Subjects are not well understood, but really powerful. Here I can say, this is everything that's Batman related. Now show me related subjects to that. And that could be an actor, an artist, a character, a city, Gotham City, you know. Uh, but I can also say, show me films. Uh, so now I get to see all the movies. And I can say, I like 2000, I like the Batman Begins. So you click on that. That will then only show you Batman Begins. Ah. And, and here I can say, well, show me more. Uh, show me other related stuff. So show me all the actors, for example. I like Christian Bale. So you can click on him, see more of him. Um, you know, and, and you can see I can go up to what's called the parents. So I can see which movies he was in. I can see the stuff that he, uh, that's based on him and so on and so forth. So there's, there's much, much more here. Um, you know, we have... Uh, 200 official archives. We have everything Hot Toys, everything Sideshow, everything Kid Robots. If you collect anything else, uh, it's a good chance we have it. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, uh, you make pop price guides more to uh, more reachable for the Funko Pop collectors because all the other uh, collections are all um, I say that uh, combined in, in in the hobby database. Yes, that's right. I mean, um, so PPG is really only Funko produced items. Yeah um because that's what the community wanted uh ppg was one of the sites that joined us so we said okay fine if you want to see fun yeah. all you get to see you know uh the same way as this is the porsche club of america um this will only show you porsche items ah look yes you know that's all they want 
So, uh, so you know, that's basically how that works. Another thing that I think is really cool, and I don't know if you have that in Europe as well, but here in the US, there's a huge trend for autograph pops. Yes, he also. Everybody wants autograph pops. So we've added this thing, and we added a few thousand now. Uh, we're adding more. So you can say, show me everything that's autographed by Chevy Chase. So these items are, um, have a sub variant that's signed by him. You know, you can click on that. Nice. You're saying there's the normal one and there's the autograph version. And that's $21 and that's $350. Nice difference. So um, that's something that we just added new. It's one of these filters. It's called autograph by. So you can just find items autographed by Michael Schumacher or whoever you like. So I have a lot of work to do, I see, because I, <laughs> I have to put in all my Funko Pops from the Funko app to the the PPG because uh, let me let me show you something else that I like. So you know, when it comes to your collections, we got two ways of looking at it. One is called collection management. That is just for yourself. But then there's also the showcase. And the showcase. So this guy here, for example, is one of our um, squad members. He's part of the volunteer team, and he collects Batman. Um, and you can see. He has his Batgirl stuff and he has his Joker stuff. And uh, here. Oh, nice. uh, so you can create, the idea was always you can create your own museum, um, you know, and, and you can choose what it looks like, what are the pages, what the lists are, you know, um, the text, the, so he calls my Batcave. You can choose if you want to show your top 10 or not. And if you want to show these values or not, all of that is configurable. This is basically his museum. Well, uh, if you click on my collection management, that's much more boring because that's really meant to be a tool for you to, you know, to say, you know, I want to sell something, I want to add something, I want to do insurance or, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. That's, that's just for me. Nobody else can see that. Very, very different to this external view, which is what I want people to see. Yes. Very nice. Um, so yeah, I, 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 we do a lot of work on that. I'm, I'm really excited about that. And in fact, you could you could get your own URL. You know, you can call it kernfunkopops.com <laughs> or .nl, and you put that over there, and then you have your own website. Cool. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I I, have, I, I I'm looking through all my my questions, but the, they are all answered. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing time again. And if any of your if any of your viewers want to join us, be in touch. We love yes. that. Um, I just like to add one more thing. Uh, you know, the site is run by two and a half thousand volunteers. It's also owned by fourteen hundred of our users. So fourteen hundred of our members own shares in HobbyDB or Price Guide, and we'll do that again later in the year. We want. We want and we need 100,000 volunteers to document everything that's ever been made. And, uh, and we want them all to own the company. Um, you know, that's, that's the mission. So that we can document, you know, we can document FC, you know, Dutch toys, anything. <laughs> anything that's collectible, we want to have in here. Which means we need a lot, a lot of help. Um, and we'd like those helpers to own the company because it's just, Nothing better than um, owning something and, and having fun with it. Very clear, very clear. Yeah, it, it was, it was, yeah, I'm, I'm very glad we have this meeting because uh, everything is very clear for me. And um, I think everybody's very happy with all the answers and uh, the whole uh, presentation Great. you give us. So uh, the, when, it, when it's up, send me the link. And if there's questions, I will come and reply. Let's do that. L sounds good. Uh, yeah, Christian, thank you for your time, and um, it was wonderful, and uh, thank you for all the answers we uh, we got, so... Bedankt, and top sins. Graag gedaan, jij hartstikke bedankt, hè. Doei, doei. Bye. Bye. Ja, dat was het gehele interview. Ja, 40 minuten uh, was Max eigenlijk. Ik heb met Zoom opgenomen en ik kon maar Max 40 minuten opnemen en nemen. Maar ik heb in principe alle informatie uh, heb ik gehad die ik wilde stellen. Dus uh, hoe gaaf is wel echt veel dingen die ik niet wist hoor. Ik wist ook niet dat er allemaal zoveel vrijwilligers waren. Dat er zoveel mensen aan deelnamen. Uh, dus op zich is het allemaal wel logisch wat ze allemaal doen. Uh, ook nooit geweten dat, dat de Funko app in principe maar ja, gedeeltes van PopRise Guide overneemt. En niet alles. Uh, en ik heb nooit geweten dat PopRise Guide eigenlijk zo uitgebreid was.
Nee, daar heb ik toch een beetje overheen gekeken. Dus uh, heel erg tof. Ik ga er zeker mee aan de slag. En wellicht dat ik in de toekomst wat vrijwilligerswerk kan gaan doen. Voor popprijsigheid. Ik heb namelijk uh, een uh, goed contact met Christian Brown. Dus wellicht in de toekomst heel erg tof. Ja, ik zei het al. Heb je nog een vraag? Zet hem even in de comments. Ja, Christian Brown gaat inderdaad een, uh, 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 als het goed is, uh, antwoord geven op jouw vraag. Dus uh, hoe tof is dat? Hè? Dan uh, kun je gewoon je, jouw uh, vraag gewoon stellen. En je krijgt gewoon uh, antwoord van de enige echte uh, oprichter, founder moet ik zeggen van PPG Hobby de database. Hoe vet is dat? Goed, uh, ja, dit was dus het eerste interview. Uh, ik vond het echt heel erg tof. En we gaan er meer doen. Ja, ik, uh, ik hoop dat jullie het leuk vinden. Want ik heb nog een paar hele gave gasten die geïnterviewen. Uh, ik kan voorbij zeggen, daar ga ik gewoon een koptelefoon op zetten. Want we beter kwaliteit hebben qua geluid. Maar dat gaat heel erg gaaf worden. Dus uh, dat binnenkort. En ik kan natuurlijk nog mystery boxen, unboxing. Uh, pff, we hebben nog meer uh, review uiteraard. Uh, maar heel veel mystery boxen en gave mailkast heb ik ook allemaal. En we gaan nog heel veel winkels af. Ik denk dat we daar eerder mee gaan beginnen. Want ik heb nog zoveel winkels die ik jullie wil laten zien. Hoe tof het daar. En natuurlijk TikTok doet een en ander ook op. Uh, maar goed, het blijft natuurlijk allemaal hier op YouTube waar het allemaal gebeurt. Heel erg tof. Ja, ga de video's niet missen. Kun je even zorgen dat je niet mist. Heel simpel. Hieronder kun je je uh, abonneren. Doe dat en druk op dat belletje. Als je een belletje drukt, krijg je een melding als een nieuwe video online staat. En vandaag zie je er weer een hele gave ja, interview video. Hoe tof is dat? En die gaan we dus meer doen. Heel graag. Van die kant kun je ook een duimpje omhoog geven. Dat zou ik ook heel tof vinden. Ja, ik zou zeggen allemaal super bedankt voor het kijken. Ik hoop dat jullie het wel vonden. Laat anders ook weer weten in de comments wat jullie ervan vonden. En uh, dan zie ik jullie heel snel weer. Tot de volgende video. Goedjes. Doei. Hoi.